All right, this is FinderX with another video walkthrough. Um, this is actually something of a continuation of a previous set of videos I did, um, and that was a video walkthrough for a game that I made uh, called Onero, and that was a couple years ago that I completed it, and then a month or so after that that I did the walkthrough. Um, the thing about Onero is that the way the game is set up, there are multiple branching paths that you can take, and we went through basically the main path, which took us to the main ending, but there are a couple of alternate endings that we can explore, and which I'll intend to do so right now. As soon as I set the settings correctly, that looks good. All right. So here we are at the title screen. We'll choose the new game option. So the main path that we went through was just called Beautiful Dreamer, which is the subtitle for the game. The full title of the game is Onero Beautiful Dreamer. Um, the name of this alternate path that we'll be going through is called Conspiracy, and then there's one other secret path that I'll hopefully get to in another video. Um, and before we get too far into it, I wanted to say that it's been two years since I've picked this up, um, so I might be a little rusty, but generally I think I know where everything is that we need to pick up to get to the alternate route. So I, I think I know where everything is to get to the alternate route and to proceed to the ending uh, that we need to. There we go. Um, and the other thing is, because there is a lot of overlap between the main route and the alternate routes, um, I won't be going into too many of the nooks and crannies throughout these levels like I did in the first set of videos. Um, We'll just proceed straight away to where we need to be to unlock the ending and to progress through each level. And hopefully we can proceed without too much of an issue. Now here I'm sort of going out of the way to pick up some items. And the reason for that is because, let me just scoot around the corner here in here is because the first boss can actually be defeated using a combination of items in this level. I'll like pick up the water in the jar and I'll kill this guy real quick. But yeah, the first boss is Michelangelo's David and you can beat him with your sword using a technique shown in the first walkthrough video. But if we take the sulfur compound here and mix it with the water, then we get sulfuric acid, which we can use to just basically insta-kill the first boss. Sort of an alternate strategy that you can use if you want to sort of get through that section a bit faster. So now we go up the stairs. And I believe we need to hit the cat with the sword and then follow the cat or I guess go in front of the cat and then wait for the cat, there's the cat all the barrels got knocked out and then we fall down here, so yes, great. Jump, jump, jump. And then I think we get like partway through the room and the boss starts coming at me. Okay, just use the item and that was pretty easy. Pick up the power 
And I think you use, is it the V key by default? And the answer is yes. Alright, so now we're at the forest level. Oh god, these centipedes. And we have to hit all, f I think there were five Moai statues. There's one. I'll just make the rounds here. And you need to hit the Moai statues in order to knock down these brick walls and proceed to the level exits. There's two exits on this level. Last time, I believe, we went uh, th through the mall. But this time, we'll be going through the gate that I just looked at, which is the um, way to the lake which is the level we want to get to because there's an important item we need in order to successfully trigger the alternate ending. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's the interest of the mall. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one more Moai statue like behind me in this general direction. Hopefully I yeah, there we go. I can see the top of it. There it is. I was going to say, hopefully we don't set much of this forest on fire wandering around. Alright, so all the Moai heads are down. Now we just need to activate this gearbox thing. And I'm just going to quick kill this centipede. Okay, so you can see now the brick gate is open, and we can proceed. Alright, so this is the lake level. Um, there's some floating stuff in the sky, and there's this path. Now, the normal way to get to this level, we didn't cover this in the previous walkthrough, would be to walk along the path, get to the end, and that would take us to, I think, the plains, which I think is the next level after the mall as well. And if you get to a certain point, I believe, yeah, there's a... There's a lake monster that comes after you, so you gotta go really fast. Now that's the normal route that we would take. But in this alternate route, what we want to do is actually jump in the water and swim very slowly toward this post that's bobbing up and down. And if you get close enough to it, the sea monster backs off, which is nice. And then you go in front of the post and use stone skin to sink beneath the water, revealing a secret room, which we then enter. Alright, so now we're inside of a sunken ship. So that's why the geometry is all sort of screwy. is because it's mostly sunken and there's air in it causing part of it to come up. So you get into this section, you stone skin again. You'll see sort of a navigator's room and this triangular eye. Pick that up. So this is the all-seeing eye. It's a common occult symbol and it's also an item which we'll be using later on. I'll just hold on to it for now. We stone skin down here and then once stone skin wears off you just float up to the top of the water and then you walk out of the water, and we get out right here. And the exit is actually on the reverse side of Station Island, which was the level with the second boss in it. I'm just going to go ahead and swim to the other side of the island because that's 
best way to face the boss, I think, is from that side. But this is the same level that you would end up if you took the other routes and didn't go through the sunken ship. So we're sort of back on the main track here. The difference, of course, being that we have this all-seeing eye item, which I'll just tuck away for now, I suppose. Don't want to get distracted during the boss fight or anything like that. And that is the area you would have normally started on had you taken a separate route from the one that we took this time. So this is pretty good right here. Proceed to the shore. And then we gotta fight this guy. And if I remember correctly, you're supposed to hit him in the f face when he jumps at you. And I forget how many times you have to do that. And I think he shoots fireballs at you too, so you gotta sort of wave back and forth like this. And actually, it's kind of nice that he turns red first before jumping. Um, I think there was an earlier version of this boss back when this was still in development where it wouldn't turn red and it was harder to time when you were supposed to hit it. I forget how many hits this guy takes. Whoops. I'm back onto the land here. Ow. At least I dodged that fireball. There we go. Okay, so not too bad. Um, now let us get the Energize talent. Energize. And this power. Whoops. Luckily, there isn't any fall damage. Actually, I think the powers in this game are referred to as rituals, if I remember correctly. And without it, it's harder to jump up this all these stairs. Anyway, now we will grab the lens and focus it down and hit the statue and we're good. So now we proceed to the next level, which is the nightmare level. And this is also where the second branching point comes up. Energize. Actually, I can use Energize to get through that without having to worry about the slowdown. Now, if you remember, if you step on those fractal-looking tiles, it makes a spooky noise and an image. So I'm going to just avoid those, if at all possible. There's Dr. Roberts. Whoop. Uh-oh. Forgot about the fixed camera angle there. And okay. And now I think... Yeah, that guy's not a threat. Now in this chase sequence, this is where the delineation occurs. Um, if you might recall, there's a guy chasing us. A giant mouth, basically. Um got to avoid these tiles. And I believe last time we went straight and outran it. But this time, Energize. there's actually a hole in the wall. There he goes. So that's the route we took last time to the dungeon. This time we will go through the temple ruins, through this door. So this level... It's got scarabs, scarabs that come out of the sand. That's the main enemy to worry about. And again, I'll actually be ignoring most of the details of this level. We will come back here again for the, uh-oh, 
Come on. It's harder to fight them on the slope. Uh-oh. This was a mistake. Uh, let's just proceed. We can lose them. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of them, though. And they all are jumping at different rates. Which makes it a little more complicated. Ow. 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 I'm gonna die from these friggin' scarabs. Okay. That one's stuck. Good enough. So you see there is this giant gate that matches the all-seeing eye. If you use the item on that gate, it opens up. And that lets you do a shortcut through this particular level, which saves us a bit of time. That said, uh, let's just kill these aliens real quick. I really hope he doesn't shoot me. There we go. I think we're out of danger. So we fight the aliens, we trigger the tank with the action button, and it shoots a hole in the wall. Up we go. And I think there are s some more scarabs. Energize! which I'm going to ignore, and instead go to the next level. Okay, so we're in the labyrinth, which you may recall was the level we went through last time as well. Um, oh shit. Boy. Those skeletons really catch up to you. But anyway, this is where the third boss battle is, and I don't think I went over it in the first video. Energize. Ow. But there's an item, let me see if I can get to it, that can be used to fight this boss as well. And it should be somewhere around here. It's a mirror, which makes sense, right? Because it's Medusa, is the boss of this level. So we beat Michelangelo's David by melting it with acid, basically. Uh, and then we beat the second boss. There's a wire there. There's a trip wire. This triggers a, tr a stone trap. Um, Energize. Jump over this. So there was the first boss, Michelangelo's David. The second boss was that giant snake, which is just called Worm, or I guess Vorm. I think it's uh, like Germanic or Scandinavian or something. Um, but we'll just proceed. Is that skeleton coming after us? Probably is. And we should be getting... Yeah, here we go. Once you see these statues, you know you're getting close to Medusa, which makes sense. And they're all sort of Greek statues, too, I guess. So last time, I believe we turned this light switch off. I guess I can't do it with the mirror in my hand, but um, we turned it off and then fodder. This time we leave the lights on, and we keep the mirror out. And when she sees the mirror, I think she dies immediately. Okay, good. We get her ta we get her ritual here. And then we the world use it to stop time and get through. And there we go. And then we go through, I'll switch back energize. to Energize here so we can go faster. So this is again a spot where it splits off. Um, so this is the train, the midnight train. This is where we first meet Quigley. And we're just going to ignore him. He'll probably show up right around here. Not here. 
Right here. Anyway, we're gonna just ignore him. And go down the hole. Alright, so you know from before we went out this door to the graveyard in the church. This time we go through this gate. And we use the controls to go to a different level. Okay, uh, I, f I actually forget the name of this level, but you see that? And that, those are, oh, oh shit, I thought I had a little more time. Those are golems, and what they do is they sort of charge at you. So what we'll do is switch to our third power. Part way down the bridge, it just friggin' drops you. Use this series of things to, oh, pick up the key. Uh, go up this ladder. There were some clouds and they shoot uh, lightning bolts at you. I got hit. Uh, I guess they just throw stones. Uh, I got hit a couple times. Well, we need this key to get through the door at the end of the level, which is right up there. Avoid the golems. And open the door. All right, now this level is kind of difficult. It's the sky level, and what that is, is don't get hit by those. There's these missile launchers that shoot missiles at you, so you're gonna have to like dodge them. I did not dodge them quite so well. Those things are bumpers, and if they bump you, they'll push you a little, so, and damage you, additionally. Ow. Energize. Um, so don't get pushed by them. We want to use the springboard to get to the second level, like that. I believe these can be sliced into the missiles with your sword, but it is very difficult. So the best thing to do is to just narrowly dodge them and they'll shoot past you. They do have a slight Energize. homing capability, which is annoying. And then on the top here, we just shoot right up to the exit. So here we are back on the space station level. Well, not back, but um, we've been here Energize. in a previous playthrough. And for this, we need to trigger a couple of things to proceed, and that is the intercom, which is right there. Oi, oi, ama quigli. And then we just jump down here. Iba qua veru como siu kua deca onto za urs. Jump up and then down. Kua ka u kua proxa u dari dari nan prevo. And we get the key card from this dude. There we go. Let's see. And I think we have to wait for Quigley to finish his spiel here before he opens up the door. Kuanzenaisuponga <laughs> I think maybe you have to use the. Okay, I guess you use you wait for him to finish and then you use the key card for both. Bonus awarded. And I guess that ate up my key card too. Not that we needed it. Really, the only thing we need from here on out is this triangle. And then we 
fall to Earth. Space station is behind us. Not much of a space station, but um, at least we're getting close now. Alright, so here we are at New Swabia, the Antarctic level. And I believe there's a bunch of skeletons hiding in the snow, which we will ignore, Energize. and instead rush directly toward the exit. We run faster than the skeletons, so you can just run in this direction, S since we know where the exit Energize. is. farther than I recalled. And there's one skeleton. I might as well just get rid of him. Energize. So that's three energizes just to cross this whole expanse. I might be able to fit in a fourth, but we might hit the exit before then. Okay. Yeah, it's further than I thought. No skeletons, though. Energize. I'll throw a fifth one in. Alright, looks like we're good. So we'll pop on in. Now this level, as I recall, is has no specific exit condition. I think it's set up to go about three minutes and then it boots you out uh, to the next level. So we'll just mosey around and take a look at the uh, furnishings, I guess, and uh, down to the basement here. This level does actually serve a purpose uh, when we go for the secret ending, but I'll cover that in that video. Uh, whoops. This is just like a... Hmm. Okay, so yeah, not much to do in the basement. So back up the stairs we go. And these doors, the, the, the door doesn't do anything. And neither does the front door. So... We're just sort of consigned to waiting out the time here. There it goes. Uh, oh, it's you. I'm so this... He, uh, you don't actually pay for that. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to have him, Dr. Roberts, doing his whole monologue to, because that would have taken up a bunch of time and all that. So we go through the tower here. Very expertly crossing the lava pit and then getting out of there. I think I got hit just the once. And then... Energize. There. Okay. Luckily the toad sort of... Whoops. Oh, damn. Did the toad fall down too? I guess it doesn't. Yeah, there he is. I guess he gets to enjoy 
the water a bit. Um, but we pretty much had the route done. It's just a matter of making that Energize. jump. Damn. Remember correctly, it starts over here. It's possible to get across without having to rely on the frog, or I guess the toad. It's just sort of irksome. Energize. So we'll just do that instead. And then uh, sort of feel it out. Okay. Hmm. Well, energize. Or we could just do that. Good enough. All right. So now on this level, I believe there's a bunch of armored suits that we have to fight. This ta this ritual tends to work better, or you can just sneak up behind them. I forget how many of these there are. Just enough. I think that was like eight, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll get there, no problem. Ow! Oh boy. Ah, uh, well, I took far more hits than I wanted to. All right, this thing's got a key on its tail, which we will just pick up like that. I have to deal with the rigmarole of having to chase it. And then we go up here to fight the boss, the last pikeman. Get our health back. And I have to remember what the strategy is. Okay, that's what it was. You go toward him, he shoots a spear. Ow. Come on. And then you hit him with your sword. Ow. Okay, hold on a sec. I gotta get the angle and the timing right. Ow. And he pushes you back when he hits you with the spear too, which is annoying. You do have to hit the spear in order to destabilize them enough to hit him. He throws knives too. I say spear, it's really a pike because he's a pikeman. Dang it. Dang it. Okay, I think he just has one more. Yep, there we go. And with that, we get Typhoon. 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 Missed. Missed. Typhoon. Missed. Typhoon. Damn it. Missed. Typhoon. Thankfully, it doesn't use up that much ritual points or ritual power or whatever. So we'll hop up on the stairs here and take the portal into the inverted nightmare level. Which is... So, same as the hospital, the ending, but is actually a, a 
an elaborate ruse. Um, Typhoon. Right, Typhoon kills those guys. Typhoon. Typhoon. Of course, you can also just Typhoon. hide. And Typhoon. Hide in these piles of dead bodies to get by them. If you run out Typhoon. of stuff or you're impatient. Typhoon. There we are. No problem. Walk right by the fetus. Right by the reflection, and then there's the freeze frame part. And then the dark part, Energize. which I'll just run up to the figure here. Take two at a time. There we go. Then we use Typhoon. Typhoon. Break the window and jump out. Alright, so now we've reached the final battle. But since we chose the different options, and we have the all-seeing eye, we should get the alternate dialogue and everything. Uh, let me switch to this. Energize. So, you arrived. And I see you've got the all-seeing eye with you as well. Since you've opened the doors I've scattered throughout Onero's dreamscape, I believe you are prepared to understand the true nature of the Onero system. I told you before that it is a tool originally created to facilitate psychoanalysis, but it's much more than that. I've tried to encode this into the dreamscape as much as I could, without them seeing the truth, hoping that you would get some idea as to what's going on in the back of your mind. Audio clips, visual cues, anything that would help get it into you subconsciously while passing under their radar. Do you know how Nero is able to construct dreamscapes? The fact is, the Onero system at some level has to be able to read information stored in the brain. Although it is a complex process, and we don't yet know exactly how to get specific pieces of data out, the system is capable of garnering at least abstract concepts from the mind of its participants. The development of Onero is one step in a long-standing plan to hack into the human brain. In order to control the mind, first one must understand the mind. That is the rationale of the benefactors supporting the development of the Onero system. Through their funding, we were able to build Onero under the guise of a tool that could be used for dream analysis. Some have said that dreams are windows into the soul, and in this case, they are transparent enough to enable us to peer into the minds of others. Frankly, I don't know the exact intentions of our benefactors, and as to why I became involved in Onero's creation, I have had my own reasons for doing so. I've done my own research. I've seen the signs. I've seen the way things are going. Have you ever heard of Majestic 12? Helter Skelter? Phantom Time? Tunguska? In 1938, the Germans made an expedition to New Swabia and Antarctica. What do you think they found there? All of these, a long list of acts brought about and manipulated by a select group of individuals. Throughout history, they have stood along the sidelines, working toward the establishment of complete control in the form of a new world order. I'm afraid that's the extent of my knowledge. Unfortunately, I haven't made much progress since the experiment started, when they first became vulnerable to exposure. In point of fact, by this moment, I'm likely already dead. Undoubtedly, they have found where I've been hiding. So I'll leave you one last 
last bit of information. I know that I am monitoring your progress and that they are not eager to see you die just yet. The data you're providing to them is invaluable. If you can continue on a little further, maybe you can succeed where I failed. I'll open the way forward for you, but you must promise me one thing. Alright, so got through all that, and he disappeared before he could tell us his last piece of advice, but that doesn't matter, because we open the door and proceed to the alternate last level. Energize. We knew you were coming, but we never expected you to meet me here. We came here to observe the experiment and record data from the participants. When we entered Onero, we encountered one of the research assistants acting as proctor for the experiment. She knew what we were, and in we struggled, we became entangled in ego and form. Now we are we, plus another. This is the only reason we helped you before. We were not used to becoming merged with another so different from we. But now we are in control. We have an interest in control, you understand. With the time we have left, we want to harvest you for more data. We know others have dreams in which they run away, pursued by beasts. In this final experiment, we will be your beasts. We will hunt you, and we will collect your data until we devour you. Run. Alright. Energize. So, we see that Quigley's coming after us here. And actually, in this encounter... Ow. Ow. In this encounter, you can't directly... Uh, take them on. What you have to do instead is sort of weave back and forth and get to these crystals and then hit them with your sword. Energize. There are three crystals so once we get those we should be all set. Uh, and quickly moves slightly faster than, than you can so it's good to use energize when you can and it's good to weave a bit in case he tries to dash at you. We get the second one. Ow. Energize. Uh, he's still a fair distance away. actually want to save this energize I think ow energize just kidding we'll just run I'm trying to remember the exact path shoot I wanted to use energize to jump over that thing but uh instead I will settle for energize well, I still had to dump over a thing, but uh, here's the last crystal. And we'll just get that, and he is taken care of. And I'll just wait until I can energize again. Energize. Whoops. Aw, oh, damn it. Where's the... There we go. Okay. So now he's dead again, and I didn't have to fall off a cliff or anything. Um, so now we get to the front of the pyramid, and Energize. jump on top, and off we go. And here we 
we are at the ending, uh, with a few key differences. Ah, you've come too. I don't know if you remember when you first woke up, but you've been in and out ever since you broke free from the Onero system. At first we were afraid we'd accidentally severed a wire. While connected to Onero, it would have been enough to cause brain death. That was the case with Dr. Roberts. I presume you know of him, perhaps not by that name. But in any case, you are out of harm's way. Listen, as a researcher for the Onero project, I find there are no words of apology strong enough to convey how deeply regretful we are that things have gone the way they have. Dr. Roberts is beyond justice now. The Onero project itself is effectively defunct as of a few days ago and we are using the remaining funds allocated for medical and therapeutic recompense to the, the survivors. Since Dr. Roberts acted alone, this is about the most we can justify to our benefactors. Again, I am truly sorry. Even though I was not personally hooked into an arrow when Dr. Roberts hijacked the system, I lost my share of friends as well. Noah Johnston and Addie Nelson, colleagues of mine, lost all brain activity. Hale Pert, a young man my kids know from school, is right on the borderline. And our research assistant, Anna Quigley, only just began recovery a little before you did. In any case, I reviewed your file and checked your vital signs. Everything seems to be in order. You should consider yourself lucky that you have no outward signs of trauma. For now, we thought it best if you leave the hospital and head back home to facilitate the healing process. For your psyche, at the very least. Take care of yourself. I hope one day that you will be able to forget the sting of this tragedy. So the ending is slightly different. Uh, of course, Dr. Roberts is dead, and he mentioned that actually Anna Quigley uh, was recovering, which wasn't the case in the original. And then you see her sitting here in the sort of wheelchair as you pass by. And then off you go to the ending, or rather the, the actual end. Alright, so that was uh, Onero, the conspiracy route. Uh, so we've covered that, and now all that's left is the secret ending, uh, and the secret route that accompanies it. It's a little more involved than this one, but I'll, I'll cover it in a different video. Um, so until then, I'll see you next time.